kids, welcome back to Let's Play Hearts of Iron 3, our continuing Let's Play with the United Kingdom. Last episode we got through, uh, uh, we got through 1936, it is now the 4th of January 1937. I would like to try and get through 1937 in this episode, uh, so that'll give you a sense of the pacing of this Let's Play. Uh, obviously, uh, I kind of want to do it that way so that um, if you know if people want to skip to the war or they want to see a particular part of the campaign, I mean, obviously it's great if you want to watch every episode, but I can certainly understand wanting to look at certain, you know, certain sections of the uh, of the let's play in, in isolation. So I just want to take a look here. It's been a while since I opened up this file, uh, so I want to take a look at what's going on in our production queue. We still have the most basic laws, so that's. That's going to be the next big deal, is changing our laws. I can see our neutrality is at 74.2. And to get to the next law, I think the next law we're going to get is going to be this one here. Yeah, once we're below 70. So if usually when I do this with as the UK, I find that then you can generally pass this first law in about March. So that'll be coming up real fast. I just want to double check here. There are a couple texts. I remember... Uh, there's a tech here that I didn't do in 36 that I want to just add on. Nothing crucial, but heavy cruiser anti-aircraft armament. The, the anti-aircraft armament upgrades, so I'm going to throw that in. Uh, and uh, I want to just do at least one round of up upgrade, because we have 16 heavy cruisers. So I think it's worth it. It'll give us a little, uh, little boost. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to organize the Navy. Uh, that's what I talked about last episode. So, uh, as I said last episode, we separated up the transports, that's fine. We'll keep them in a totally separate fleet. By the way, some people do like to mix transports and give them kind of an escort. I don't. I don't. I just find that it's better to... My, my view anyway is that all of these forces here, we, we, we might as well use them. And I don't want to have transports attached to fleets because I don't want to accidentally send transports into combat. And yeah, so we have to be a little bit more careful with moving, with transporting troops around once we're at war, but uh, but I think it's I think we're better off. So, um, first off, let's actually make our battle fleets. So I'm just going to take all the ships that we're going to put in our battle fleets and I'm going to put them in one fleet just for my own sanity's sake. Uh, and that'll give us a sense of, of uh, what we have to play with. So we've got 31 capitals. I'm obviously excluding carriers. You never want to mix carriers and uh, and other capital ships. And uh, I gotta think about... I find as the UK, because we have all these like kind of horrendously out-of-date escorts, I actually find that they're good to throw into your main battle fleets because we lose a few, that's not a big deal. Uh, and... Yeah, I just find that that we can we can kind of reserve these uh, Le Leander class or Ajax class uh, light cruisers for more specialized duties. We've also got these two here, two um, these sort of level two. Uh, I guess they're Emerald class, the Emerald and the Ent Enterprise. And I'll do the same with the destroyers. Let's just get a sense of how many of these we have. Uh, and the other thing too is that. These higher level destroyers, I would rather have higher level destroyers with bigger guns in my uh, ASW fleets. So yeah, that's the idea there is just to um, to reserve the our higher level ships for more specialized duties. Smaller fleets as well. Yeah, there we go. That's good. So how many of these light cruisers do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We only we only have nine modern light cruisers, unless I mixed a few in here by mistake. I don't think I did. Yeah. Okay. So this also gives us a sense. Like these are this is sort of our more modern fleet here. All right. So in terms of battle fleets. I want to have fleets that are kind of size 12, and I'm going to mix in different types of ships. So let's grab, let's grab a Nelson class. How many of these? We have like 31. So maybe like sort of five capitals in each fleet. And we'll grab a Hood class and a couple of heavy cruisers. And then kind of an equal number of these, I think.
Yeah, so we'll go with the sort of five capitals, seven escorts, and we'll just do a mix. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna kind of really heavily micromanage all this. I like to go with size twelve fleets because like twelve ships in a fleet. Uh, because that means that we can put a two-star admiral in charge, and uh, and the one thing you, it's good to know about admirals is that the more stars they have, the slower they gain experience. So I don't, I don't, I'm not going to use like six ships in a fleet, which would allow us to use the one-star general, uh, because those fleets are just too weak. But I feel like. Tw uh, 12 ships in a fleet with a two-star general is a good mix of like gaining experience quickly but also protecting our naval assets and not having a small fleet get isolated and slammed by like an Italian doomstack or something. Alright, we'll take one of those, one of those, one of those, two of those, and then maybe three of these, and four of these. Now we're out of the... we don't have any more of those better battleships, but it's not a big deal. Uh, one thing to remember too is that, you know, you start the game with a bunch of uh, level 1 battleships and a number of countries have, have older battleships. Battleships are always useful. Uh, even if you're not using them in, in your main fleets, uh, you can use them to... You can use them to do shore bombardment, you can, you can use them to... they're very good at sinking ships. All right, we'll just go two battleships and three heavy cruisers for the rest of our fleets here. And I think that's just about right. I'm going to name these. Call this battle fleets. Actually, don't know what the uh, don't really know what the Royal Navy order of battle looked like. I know they had like lettered squadrons, like H force and and for covering different areas. Uh, but uh, and then they you know but I don't know what the hierarchy of the fleet was. Um, Vanilla Hearts of Iron Three doesn't really let you create a de uh, a proper naval order of battle. Uh, we will probably create, we'll probably kind of create a makeshift naval order of battle just for, for sanity's sake. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I mean, because you you know you normally you would sort of have the, the home fleet command and then then a bunch of smaller fleets that are part of the home fleet. And we are gonna I think do something like that. So I'll just go with these numbered fleets. And then the next type of fleet that I want to create are is uh, some anti-submarine warfare fleets. So, for these, I'm gonna, I am gonna create a size, I wonder if I have enough ships to do this actually, uh, sort of six ship fleet. Uh, I like to put the escort carrier because as as our even though this is a, an old out of date Hermes class escort carrier, as our as our carrier as our carrier aircraft get updated, they'll get increasingly good at especially once we get radar techs at spotting subs. Uh, the the destroyers have particularly high sub attack, and I just like to throw a light cruiser in there because if we do trap a sub, I do find that if the light cruiser gets in range and fires at it, they they're a little bit better at actually sinking. They just add a little bit of punch to the fleet as well. This, these fleets are good too because they don't need a lot of supervision. Uh, even if even if they get attacked by uh, a large Italian fleet or a few of the German heavy cruisers or one of the you know the Tirpitz or or Bismarck or something, usually the carrier air groups are the the one carrier air group is enough to to make the fleet at least survive it might come back a little bit mauled but we probably won't lose very much if anything so i find that they're they're a good format and i'm going to be building some more of those i've got i think i've got a if, if i remember correctly i've got an escort carrier in the um in the queue right now so uh yeah let's grab these guys Another strategy for anti-submarine warfare is to build larger, or sorry, smaller destroyer squadrons so they can cover more grounds. I, I don't find that to be as effective. I find that they tend to just p patrol around endlessly and not find anything. These these fleets are really good at finding subs, 
and I find that they engage them more often. The escort carrier is just essential. So if we can build even just two or three more of these escort carriers uh, over the course of the campaign, uh, and we and and the escorts to go along with them, then I think they'll be they'll be very useful. As I said before, uh, I won't be, uh, I won't show you guys every step of organizing the order of battle. I just want to kind of show you the, my f the first round to show you the kinds of kinds of decisions I'm making. But if I have to do a major reorganization of the navy at some point or the army or whatever, I, I may very well do it off off screen. Okay, now I'd like to build. I've got an aircraft carrier in the queue, the Ark Royal. So I would like to build. How many more of these do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, let's do that. Do I want to throw a destroyer in? I don't think so. I think it, I think for these carrier fleets, I don't want to put destroyers in them for now because you can see these destroyers only have 27, 27, they don't, they don't have very much range basically is what I'm trying to say. Um, well, maybe I'll throw, no, I'll save these, I'll save the rest of our destroyers for, for the more ASW squadrons. And then the last carrier group, I'll put the Ark Royal on this when it's when it's completed. Uh, I'm gonna just, uh, I guess, it, yeah, that can kind of keep. We can just call this Royal Navy, and we'll uh, we'll we'll use it to deploy ships. I always like to have one stack uh, that I use to deploy ships. Mm, okay, let's. I'm gonna actually use these subs because. Just make maybe three squadrons. Normally, I would make if I were playing as Germany, I might make uh, stacks of two or three. I'm kind of keeping these a little bit bigger so that we don't lose the leaders. Not that it's a big deal. I'm just not going to be worrying too too much about uh, submarines in this. So we're going to start with two carrier squadrons. With. Uh, Two carrier squadrons with, with uh, two carriers each, uh, which will which is four CAGs, which which will have basically no stacking penalty. Once we are fighting in the Pacific, I may I may combine these into larger kind of doom stack carrier carrier fleets. Uh, but for now, for now we'll stick with that. So that's that's it for the navy. So I'll just name these uh, submarine squadrons. I'm not going to send them out all over the world quite yet, but I will at some point soon. And let's get going. Let's uh, let's unpause and try and get through 1937. We're still in the negative for rares. I'm not too worried about that. We might be being a bit aggressive with uh, selling them, but soon enough we'll uh, cancel some of those deals. We're also losing money. Sell fuel to France. That's fine. Doctrines are starting to finish up. Just put those land doctrines back up. I've also got naval doctrines uh, in place. These are really important for, for Britain. Uh, even if we're not going to be building modern ships, like I want to keep a lot of these up to date. This is obviously, I think, maybe the most important ones as well as the destroyer positioning. And I think the positioning is probably the most important for sinking subs. Uh, spotting as well for spotting subs. And, uh, but these two are really important too. For all of our uh, kind of ship-to-ship -ship combat, this this in this basically increases the chance of, these both of these combined increase the chance of you hitting valuable targets. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, Doctrines are starting to finish up. I'll uh, just get, take them out of the queue as they are up to date. This one needs to go back up again. What's going on here? Yeah, I've got so much cash that I'm just not I'm just not worried about buying tons of shit. Increase our uh, increase our production a bit. Am I missing anything in this queue? We don't have any destroyers in the queue. Did we finish the destroyer techs? Yeah, we did. Did I put destroyers in the queue? This is something I got to keep an eye on. As the UK uh, find, it's pretty damn important. What is our destroyer 
practical. Now let's put at least one destroyer in the queue. For now I'm just trying to get a little bit of the different types of practical. And then as we get closer to the war we will really prioritize uh, sort of what we actually need by the time the war starts in terms of navies and air force and all that. Some other projects will get kind of temporarily delayed. Another radar station in Dover. Always good news. Uh, I'm gonna just take that off for now. Just wanted it was 1918. I just wanted to get a little bit better, a little bit less of an org penalty for if we do any tactical bombing. But I don't know. I think feel, feel like tactical bombers may be the plane that we use the least. To be perfectly honest, we'll see. See what situations we get ourselves into here. That IC is almost done. Ah, oh, we lost unity. That sucks. Uh, am I increasing unity here? Yeah. Good. Good news. All right, that IC finished. Let's put it up here, Manchester and Leeds. I don't. Uh, I find that AI Germany doesn't strategic bomb your cities, so it doesn't really matter where you put IC if you're going to build any. So. Yeah. No. So. AI Germany doesn't really do a, any kind of bombing campaign. They will bomb our ports. I find them bombing our ports more often than uh, in, in UK than than bombing IC. Ruling party support. That's good. All right. Oh, I want to double check and make sure that I didn't forget to. Okay, good. We got medium medium armors on its way. And I think we're good. You're we building up quite a reserve of spies. So that's good. Oh, let's take a look at... I have a feeling, like, if I keep forgetting to look at this, then at some point we'll just stop doing it, to be perfectly honest. Am I influencing? Yeah, I'm influencing Hungary. That's actually quite good. I don't think they're close enough to join the Axis. So that's good. Oh, we got our law. March 30th. I might have actually missed that when it popped up. This is really, really good. So we'll take basic mobilization. It's going to cost us a little bit of money, but it's going to give us a lot more IC. Let's take a look. We, we had we had about, I don't know, 70 or so IC available, and we've just jumped right up to 110. So starting to feel more like a major power. At this point, I can also look at... Oh yeah, I should put probably put an armor brigade or two at the top. Start to look at maybe mixing in some of these. Let's just see. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Just put the armor up top. Mm. These are low priority, but you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going for a while on those. I think we're in good shape. Organized offensive, very important tech. Schwerpunkt, put that right back up because it's a high difficulty tech. We have a shortage of metal, so let's go buy some from the USA. That law, it's kind of a weird one. It, uh, it, in it actually increases the amount of resources that we make and obviously gives us more IC, but sometimes you end up in a deficit. Obviously we're uh, kind of bleeding cash right now, but that's okay. What's our uh, 180? Okay, that's good. Uh, yeah, so I finished the IC. I'd also like to... I'd also like to um, put some more construction stuff in the queue. So I'm just going to think about maybe some air bases that could be useful. Could also we could also upgrade some of our naval bases, but I just to be perfectly honest, as the UK, I just don't I don't really feel that we that there's any particular area where we need um, higher level naval bases. Maybe Malta, maybe Malta. Um, question is, do I want to put an air base kind of on the front in, over here? Because this there's an air base here. 
And there's an airbase here, but they're kind of far from where we're actually fighting. Maybe to cover off that one. Kind of looking at where the enemy has airbases. Problem is, this is pretty low infrastructure, and any more than like a level one, like any more than one or two air units will probably suck up all of the fuel and supplies that these uh, that this infrastructure is able to carry. But maybe we'll do like a level one here to kind of counter this one. Mm. Of course, it's not very defensible, is it? Not very defensible terrain. I guess it's jungle. Not so bad. Maybe we'll put it one back from the front here. What level is Malta? Malta is probably almost done upgrading. Oh yeah, it's almost done upgrading. You know what? I think we'll do maybe one more level of naval base in Malta. Uh, we can support 40 units. It would be nice to be able to support some more units. As our basing tech increases, this number will also go up. The, the number in the bottom right that you're seeing there, this base can repair 39.9. Uh, so that'd be good to be able to repair a little bit more in case we have to really reinforce that base. Kind of overstack Malta. But I think that's good. Always good to be doing getting some construction practical. What is our construction practical? 5.2, yeah. So just kind of maintain that. Especially early on. Salt concentration. Heavy cruiser anti-aircraft, that's great. Alright, so I'll just drop these there. That Royal Navy stack is going to be my kind of deployment stack. Maybe I'll put an artillery up. Just kind of do a mix of these at all times. Uh, maybe I'll get these done too. I'll just put all those up top. Mm, maybe one of these too. Yeah, we are really bleeding cash, but that's fine. Just kind of burn off the excess cash. Money is just not that valuable in this. So that is our... Yeah, that's fine. I'm not going to research anything ahead of time yet, but as soon as we get to... As soon as we get to July, I'll put in uh, a few 1938 texts that I want to get early. Rock and roll. We've got... What is that? Four or five? Okay. Let's build at least one more interceptor before the war starts. What's our fighter practical? 6.9, that's great. Light aircraft practical, I mean. We got our first naval bomber. Mm -hmm. um, let's see here, medium bomber practical is 4.7. All it takes is like, you just build two of those and then you're, you're above five. As soon as you're above five, you're... Your, you research things a lot faster, you, like, so even if you're not going to use naval bombers heavily, building two or three will probably give you enough practical to give you a substantial boost to uh, certain techs, uh, research speed and stuff like that, as well as, you know, eventually if you want to build more bombers, but it's definitely worth building a few medium and, and even a few heavy, heavies, heavy aircraft. Uh, one year draft, that's very important. I'm not putting anything into officer ratio yet. We will need to, but I'm not going to do it yet. Uh, because we still have shitty laws, but but that that law, the recruitment laws, also affect your monthly manpower gain. And as we get better laws, the UK actually has a huge amount, a huge pool of manpower because of India. Even though we get the overseas penalty. All right, uh, let's put in a few ahead of time texts. 1938. Uh, I want to focus on well, obviously, the industry ones are important. Um, mm, uh, you know what, even before we do these, I know they're important, but I think I want to do advanced construction engineering so we can build some infrastructure, um, multi-role fighter developments, and these four. The reason being uh, that these, all the techs I've just selected, oh, and these four as well, unlock they unlock um, new new things that we can build. So I want to get to uh, I want to get to self-propelled SP art brigades pretty much as soon as possible. It's not like I'm I'm you know I don't need to have them ready by the time the war starts or anything. 
uh, but uh, but I certainly I certainly want to get them sooner rather than later. So yeah, we'll put those on first, and then I'm also just going to queue up a handful of the really really important industry techs. Um, not a bad idea to do steel product. Well, the thing is, when you're choosing these techs, it's always good to take a look of what you're actually producing. So you can see that we produce about 90 or almost 100 metal, and we produce you know about you know, I'm combining the home territory and convoys number, so that's about almost 300 energy. If if the numbers here are low, uh, then then you're you're only getting a 10% boost or whatever, or 5% boost with each level. I think it's 5% boost with each level of tech. So we produce a lot of everything, though. So it's not a bad idea to do maybe one round of. I'm not going to do rares because we just always have so many rares. Like you can see, a few deals have clearly been cancelled, and we're not trading as away as many anymore. So we'll this will easily max that out. Uh, but I might do coal processing. Can also do coal to oil conversion. I'm not going to do it, but we uh, it can be useful uh, because is basically it frees up more coal for other purposes. So it kind of indirectly it not only increases your fuel reserves, but it it also kind of indirectly increases the amount of coal that you have. So I'm not going to bother because I think it's it's a little bit too much. Oh, there's a couple more I missed. I always want to line up those uh, these two here. Always forget those. These are cool texts too because they, they you know, they, they we have a big malice to research them, but they also give us plus one land combat experience. So if we do these ones and we do these ones, we can actually get some land combat experience uh, before the war starts, before we're even doing any fighting, which will speed up our doctrine research a lot. So that's something to, a good good thing to keep in mind. Obviously, you're you're wasting a bit of leadership researching something that you have a malice on, but I think it's worth it, if especially if you're researching a lot of doctrines. All right, that's good. We're gonna have to be a bit choosy. 1938 is a big tech year. We got in, we got all these, we got these, we got lots to add. So we're gonna have to be a bit, you know, we're gonna sort of pick and choose what we prioritize. All right, we will make a landing craft squad soon. Selling crude. Let's take a look at our production. Ah, these are finishing up. Notice I'm also putting a lot of these upgrade units. I've put them in the queue now that we are now that we have better laws. It's uh, it's useful. Uh, I think I'm just gonna finish up all these garrisons so I can deploy them. Naval strike tactics. That's a very useful tech. Oh, we can take that one off. Good. What is? Oh, it's this one. Yep. Super important tech. Good. I'm just going to stick these here. Just kind of keep things sorted. I haven't really done any work on that order of battle. But I will at some point. Once we have a little bit more built, I'll start deploying things overseas. Uh, okay, this event. Stanley Baldwin resigns. So, um, that changes our ministers. I'm going to go check on our ministers. Oh, I don't want this guy. I want... I think consumer goods is still best. How many consumer goods am I... Con you know, how many consumer goods am I consuming? Uh, five. What's better? Hmm. Well, it's clearly a choice between these two. I feel like this guy might actually be better, considering that as well. That might actually be more useful. Kind of stockpile some resources before the war. Ah, let's keep him for now. Uh, he stays. This doesn't matter. I'll put industrial intel. Just because it's not a bad idea for us to keep an eye on what Germany's building. We don't get a lot of detail here because most of our points are in, in increased threat, but uh, pretty soon, once we once we get 
our best laws, I'll probably switch over to military espionage because I kind of want to keep an eye on whether they build, you know, if Bismarck interprets are in the queue, queue uh, in their production queue or whatever. What else? Uh, this guy, no, there's nothing better there. Supply consumption. Ah, I'd like cruiser practical dec decay for sure. Uh, we're not building capital ships, so I would much rather have the, the cruiser decay. And there's nothing, nothing to write home about. All right, good. A couple quick changes. We are definitely going to be able to finish 37 in this episode, so I'm on target. Just double check, make sure I didn't cancel anything that's uh, still behind. Guerrilla Warfare is done. Everything is slowly coming up to date. We're still, we're still kind of behind though, right? So, great little bit of IC, that's good. Glad to see our national unity's gone back to 80. It's a real bitch to raise uh, raise national unity, so. All right, I'll probably put another uh, destroyer in the queue. We got a new law. Let's do that right away before I forget. Uh, Two-year draft, excellent. And full mobilization, great. So we're probably gonna have to adjust our trade deal soon because that's gonna, yeah, we're down to minus. We're also low on metal. Let's buy some more metal from the USA. Uh, at this point, we're at 180. Yep. And I have a bad habit of like changing terrain, terrain, changing map modes, and then just forgetting to change back. You'll probably notice me like play for half an hour straight in like naval map mode when I'm doing land combat or something. It's it's pretty funny. Um, yeah. At this point, I'm going to hold off on buying more resources, but once we get the best laws possible, I will kind of see how much we can afford and just kind of buy the max. Uh, yeah, whatever. That's an excellent tech. Carrier crew training. Some of these techs are ahead of time. Some of them are still behind. It generally, I find that the it for the UK anyway, given what what we focus on, uh, it's the odd years that you tend to fall fall behind on techs. Thirty eight, nineteen forty, uh, forty two. Those are the years when you tend to you you have to be a bit careful uh, not to not to put too much in the queue. Uh, what can I do here? I can kind of mix this up a bit more. Let's get this armor going. A couple more of those. <coughs> uh, I'm just going to leave that at the bottom. We probably won't build it anytime soon. I'm not in a rush. Uh, we have... Oh yeah, I want to put a destroyer in the queue. What I need to do here is put all the ships at the top. Because I just find it's too hard to it's too hard to see. What's our light cruiser practical? Five, so I want to put mm, probably two. Two light cruisers. And one destroyer in the queue. We're still building tribal class destroyers. Um Everything else looks good. Did I finish? Yeah, I finished one of those, eh? Okay. Just want to look at our practicals. Yeah, I want to get these practicals a little bit higher before I drop them in the queue. Uh, let's start with some more important techs. Uh, my, I'm going to let my armor be a little bit behind. We're not going to be using a lot of armor early on. Um, this is important. That's one of the cool things about the UK as well, is that you, you, like, all of these are important, except maybe Arctic. And to be honest, I'm very, very tempted just to put Arctic in there just for kicks. I know it's not useful. There's, like, there's only, like, ten Arctic tiles in the whole map. But, uh, but I, I almost want to put it in there just for flavor, so we can have this, this formidable force that is... Hmm... No, 
Nah, you know what? I'm just going to hold off. Maybe we'll do artillery. And then probably let's start with... Oh, this is vital. Uh, one of the most important techs in the entire game, for the UK anyway, is that one for sure. Uh, question is, do I want light cruisers or destroyers? I think we're going to go with destroyers. We may have to just use the 36 level... Uh, what are they called? They're called South Ap Southampton class destroyers. We, we may end up using those quite quite far into the war. Uh, and that's one thing to keep in mind when you're the UK. As Germany, you might want to research, get your re your um, naval techs like really, really, really up to date. Uh, in as the UK, you can kind of use quantity over quality. Uh, obviously, it's great to have like super fast destroyers and you know uh, really, really, really good uh, aircraft carriers, but I think as the UK, it doesn't really matter quite as much as long as you have. As long as you have, uh, you know, a decent decent quantity of ships, you can afford to lose more than, than your enemies, basically. Possibly with the exception of aircraft carriers. Uh, I'll do at least one more round of aircraft carrier research before the war starts, I think. What else do we have here? That's looking pretty good. Um, I want these. They're not vital, but I like to have them. Uh, I like to be able to sort of see see uh, the enemy. I'm not going to put any doctrines in for now. We'll just uh, we'll go with those. Let's take a look at diplomacy one last time in this episode. Europe. So Hungary is kind of drifting over there. Yugoslavia is slowly drifting towards the Axis. Uh, Romania is still drifting towards us. That's great. I might switch to one of these. Oh, they're drifting. Hungary's okay. Ills. Could do. Now let's get them a little further. But I definitely want to influence Yugoslavia. I do not want Yugoslavia in the Axis. They have a, a rather large army. Um, looks like we're going to be able to... Let's take a look at that. I want to make sure I have enough destroyers by the beginning of the war to make another... Another one of those uh, ASW squadrons. So one, two, one, two, three. Yep, for sure. Uh, we could also put a another escort carrier. Colossus class. Weird. Huh. I feel like the Colossus like never got built. Okay. Uh, HMS Vengeance. That's the unicorn. <laughs> okay. Almost to the end of almost to the end of thirty seven. Take that off. So yeah, we're coming to the end of nineteen thirty seven. Uh, next episode we will do uh, nineteen thirty eight. I'll try and get through all of it. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do next to next episode is I'm going to take a real good hard look at um, what uh, what we're building, and because by the time it's 1938, we really need to be be uh, preparing for the war. We can't be, you know, there's there's some things that we're building right now that we're going to we're going to put off some of our production. We're going to put off until later. And uh, oh, nice. That's three year draft. So those are the best laws we can get. Uh, those are the best laws we can get until uh, until the war actually starts. So as a result, I'm going to stop increasing threat, and I'm going to put uh, I'm going to put one point in counter espionage and three in. You know what? I'm just put them all in counter espionage, and then we will put uh, we will put points in military espionage later, so that I get some some more information here, and so I can also kind of see more there. Oh yeah. We need to buy some more stuff. Uh, we need to buy, I'd say, at least... You know, oof, they don't have enough. Hmm, okay. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, th someone, Someone's buying a bunch right now, probably like Germany or something, and, and they will at some point stop. So we, can, we will be able to buy more energy from the USA eventually. 
uh, we need at least 30. 30 metal. Let's go with 50. And that's it. It is 1938, January 1st. Uh, but I'm going to do this now before I forget. I just want to check these guys, see if we have anybody new. And then I'm going to call it for this episode. Supply throughput. That's better. Mm, yep. Okay. Well, I uh, hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, next episode, we will be doing 1938. Uh, if you did enjoy it, please like uh, like the episode, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Ciao.